Errante Stellahanto. Fade in. Interior, new house, living room, night. A piano begins playing a musical score. The expression on every person in the room is shock as they all stare at the same thing. All of them begin turning and looking at each other for reassurance that this is actually happening. Riley, 40, a sharp-dressed, no-nonsense agent, looks over worried at Ross, 60, a bigwig at a major film and recording studio. Ross does not look pleased. The room is covered in boxes like someone just moved in and has yet to finish packing. Sitting at a piano is Joe, 35, who stops playing the song and laughs under his breath. Quit messing around, Dan. Let's play the song. The guy everyone is staring at is Dan, 35, who looks like a super boring version of your average family man. He's looking down at his acoustic guitar, embarrassed. He moves his fingers across the neck of the guitar, feeling the unfamiliar strings. Dan looks up at everyone. They are all looking back at him, puzzled, not understanding what he's doing. The moment seems awkward and tense. The only person in the small group of spectators that finds amusement in this is Clyde, 50, who is standing in the back of the crowd wearing an old beaten down suit. Clyde holds his hand over his mouth like he's trying not to laugh. Joe looks over at Dan and nods. Joe then begins to play the piano again. Dan, sweat going down his brow, starts to play and stops suddenly, only getting out half a chord. Joe stops playing the piano, embarrassed. Riley smiles at everyone and puts his drink down on a table. He scurries past Ross who gives Riley a disapproving look. Riley makes it over towards Dan, who is sitting in the chair with a blank look on his face. Joe watches intently. It's okay. He's not used to playing in front of crowds. Uh, Dan's more of a studio guy. Some people laugh. Clyde finally lets out a small laugh. Others look concerned. Riley grabs Dan by the collar and pulls him up. Can I talk to you for a second? Dan gets up and follows him into the hallway. Ross watches Riley and Dan walk out of the room. He shakes his head disapprovingly at them and looks the other way. Michelle, 23, Joe's much younger wife, stealthily leans into Dan's wife, Jen, 35's ear. Jen is Dan's wife. Why didn't he play the song? I don't know. Jen looks over at Dan, concerned. Interior, new house, hallway, continuous. Riley stops in the middle of the hallway, pissed. Dan is showing no emotion. The hell is wrong with you? Ross is here, Dan. Did you know that? Dan shakes his head yes. Then what are you doing? Did you forget your own song? Dan is spaced out. Dan. Hello? Dan back looks at him. What? What? Are you serious? I've been selling this song all night, and when it's finally time for you to play, you just sit there like you're high on something? You're staring at the guitar like it's the first time you've ever seen it. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm just not feeling like myself. I, I, I must be sick or something. If I get you some Tylenol for my wife's purse, will you play the fucking song and not make me look like an asshole in front of the head of the studio? Dan shakes his head. Riley bolts back into the room. God damn musicians. Interior, new house, living room, continuous. Riley glides back in the room, smiling. He's not feeling all that great right now, but you're all in luck. He's a professional and he's going to play through it. Dan walks into the room. Everyone stares at him as he walks over toward the chair. Riley walks up to his hot blonde wife, 25. Give me a Tylenol. What? A Tylenol. Give me a goddamn Tylenol. Riley's wife sorts through her purse and pulls out a bottle. Jen walks up to Dan. What's going on? Are you okay? Yeah, I just have a headache. Riley's going to get me something for it. I'm sure it'll go away soon. He smiles at her. Jen still looks concerned. She looks around the room at the unpacked boxes. I knew this party was a bad idea, Dan. We're not even all the way moved in yet. It's a stressful time. You don't have to play if you don't want to. No, I've been working on this song for months. It's the closing credits. It will be nice to finally get to play it for everyone. And that's the only reason they're all here. It's not like this is a housewarming party. Riley walks up to Dan, holding two Tylenols in his palm. Here's your pills. Suck them down, and let's get going. Riley hands the pills to Dan. Need some water, or can you take them like this? He's good. Dan and Riley exchange tense glances as Dan quickly swallows the pills. Get it together. I will buy you two more minutes, and you better make the most of it. Riley turns toward everybody, putting on a happy face. Anyone who knows Joe for longer than ten minutes has heard him tell the story of the first time he met Dan. Riley forces a smile as he shifts his gaze through the room. He can tell he's about to lose the crowd. Joe had just finished a gig at, um, 
where was it, Joe? Uh, Twilight Star or Lone Cowboy or one of those dives on Sunset that was only open for a month. Wherever it was, it was a real shithole. Anyway, Joe happened to catch Dan's set, and they ended up talking for like six hours about fuck all. Apparently, Joe's rendition of Don't Stop Believin' also caught Dan's ear. Fast forward to now, and they're soulmates or some shit. Hell if I understand why, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> I've heard Joe play Don't Stop Believin', and believe me, it's terrible. So, uh, I know there was a point to be made here, but like Dan and Joe's career, it often leads nowhere. So, without further ado, Dan and Joe would like to play a piece they've been working on for an upcoming feature. Like most of their songs, they should get this one right before the 10th take. <laughs> Stage is yours, boys. Riley walks over and blends in with the crowd in the living room, looking nervous. Everyone has their eyes on Dan. Dan looks down at the guitar that is lying on top of the chair. He picks it up slowly and puts the strap over his shoulder. He takes the pick out of the strings at the top of the guitar. He looks over at Joe and gives him a nod to start. Thanks, everyone. That was our manager, Riley Hamilton. He couldn't spot talent if it was pissing on his Porsche, which neither of us has definitely ever done. Right, Dan? <laughs> I knew that was you, you prick! Some people laugh, but the mood is still tense. Okay, this song is called So Softly, which Dan here wrote, and with luck, it will be the closing credits for the film My Mind's Lair, coming out sometime next fall. And if you're a good crowd, maybe we'll throw in Don't Stop Believing next. Joe turns to Dan. Are you ready? Dan shakes his head, yes. Joe begins to play the piano. Everyone watches intensely. Dan puts his finger on the frets and strums a few seconds on the guitar. It sounds horrible. He looks up, embarrassed. Joe stops playing and looks over at Dan. Dan clears his throat. Sorry. Go ahead and start again, Joe. Joe begins playing again. Dan strummed the guitar, but again it sounds like he's playing the guitar for the first time. Joe, who once had a smile on his face, now looks concerned as he plays. Riley is rubbing his balding head with his hand in frustration. Dan abruptly stops playing, frustrated. Joe, equally frustrated, looks down at the piano but keeps playing. You can stop now. Joe? Joe pretends like he's not hearing Dan and continues playing with a resentful look on his face. Dan tries to join the song again, but it sounds awful. What the hell is wrong with you? Can't you play the guitar? Dan stops playing and stands up and looks at the group of people who are all staring at him. He suddenly takes the guitar by the neck and swings it against the wall above the fireplace, breaking it into pieces and putting a light hole in the wall. There's a cry from the crowd of people watching him. Joe cuts off the music and jumps up from the piano to avoid the flying guitar pieces. Everyone in the living room looks absolutely bewildered. Jen puts her hand over her mouth. Dan stares back at them as he begins to sweat, breathing heavily. Interior, new house, living room, later. Jen is holding the door open for a group of guests leaving the house. Bye. Thanks for coming. Sorry about that. Joe and Michelle stop at the door behind a group of people who just left. They look concerned. Is he going to be okay? They look over at Dan, who is pacing in an old rocking chair in the living room, staring plainly at the floor. Yeah, I'm... Sure, he's just stressed out over the new contract and the move. I hope so. I'll see you tomorrow, buddy. Dan doesn't look up. Joe smiles at Jen and they walk out. Jen closes the door behind them and stares back at Dan, feeling concerned for him. Interior, new house, Melly's bedroom, night. Dan is putting the covers on top of Melly, his cute, blonde, seven-year-old daughter. Now, I want you to sleep in your bed tonight. No sleeping with mommy and daddy, you got it? Melly shakes her head. All right. Good night, Melly. Dan walks over and gives Melly a kiss on the forehead. Melly closes her eyes and moves her head forward, but stops her motion and opens her eyes when she's kissed. She looks up at her dad, shocked and hurt at what just happened, and then looks hurt as Dan walks out of the room. Jen walks into Melly's room just as Dan leaves. Melly is looking at the door, frightened. <laughs> 